Hello everyone, I just wanted to update you on some changes to Google and what Google is now branding its G Suite, which is Drive, Doc, Sheets, Slides, and all the other software that comes along with cloud editing in Google. And that change uh, that I want to focus on primarily is in the Explore button. So if you're in a document, as you can see, I just got a sample one created. And if you're watching this video and wondering, how did you make a document? How did you even get into Google? you'll want to watch some of my other videos uh, that I've saved on Canvas and catch up to this point. This is more for people who have used Google already in the past. So if you're in a document editing, I already went ahead and named it, we've got this Explore button down here and it allows us some more functionality. So let me just give a subject here. What if I was doing a research paper on Steve Jobs? Most of the time in the past, I would open another tab and I would literally Google Steve Jobs, get my research, and then bring it back to my original document in the original tab. But now, with the Explore button, I don't have to do that. It makes things a lot more streamlined. So notice, I've only typed Steve Jobs so far in this document. Now watch when I click Explore. It notices and latches onto those keywords, in this case, Steve Jobs, and it brings up some suggested images, web results, topics, etc., all related to Steve Jobs. Now, let's say underneath Steve Jobs, I wanted to go ahead and just insert a picture of Steve Jobs. I could click that little plus symbol. Well, that's a little big, so I'm going to scale it down. And there's a picture of Steve. Now, I can push enter afterwards, and I could also bring in some related research to him. Let's say that this, here we go, this last one's pretty good from biography.com. If I wanted to put that in there, I can go ahead and hit the plus symbol, and two things actually just happen there. One, with just clicking the plus symbol, it put in that research about Steve Jobs, but it also cited it. And you can see its default MLA format went in as a citation footnote. Now we, I'll show you how to change that here in a moment, when you do any type of research, we obviously have to cite our references. The Explore button has also made that simpler. So let's pretend that Steve Jobs, my title here, needed a cited reference. And I just wanted to search Steve Jobs up here in the search bar. Now, when you do a search, you get web images and drive results. Maybe you have a document already related to the topic. You can pull it from there. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to stick to the web or images for some new material. Now, check this out. This is new, the way we can cite things here in Google Docs, or at least it was brought back recently. If I scroll down to my web results, I can click this little three-dot ellipsis and pick my citation format. Now, for high school, MLA is fine. And now, to cite something, it is so simple. Let's say I wanted to cite this Wikipedia page. I just make sure my insertion point is where I would have my citation footnote. I click the little quote button where it says cite as footnote and it's done. Take a look. It even reordered my citations. Originally this was the first one, but since this one is now the first footnote on the page, it reordered them and it's an MLA format. Now if your teacher, professor, whomever in the future doesn't want you to have citations in the, the footnote, Obviously, you could cut and paste those out, put them on a works cited or wherever your instructor tells you to do so, and you can delete these footnotes. But that is a really, really beneficial, streamlined approach to a lot of different research options as far as pulling in websites, pulling in images, and pulling in citations from other locations uh, where you got your research. And obviously, the because it's in Google, the default browser is Google. I don't know that you can change it. I don't think Google would let you. But uh, when you're done with Explore, all you have to do is click the little X. It goes away, and you can always re-access it, uh, re it down there just by clicking on the button. Now, uh, as far as the iPad goes, this is the desktop version. Let me show you what the iPad version looks like. Pull up my video document here. There's the exact same Steve Jobs article I was just working on, but you'll notice right away that this, and this is an updated version of Google Drive and Docs on the iPad, 
the footnotes aren't supported. And speaking of versions of the iPad apps, if you're a student with an outdated version of the iPad app, this is winter of 2016. So if you don't have the most up-to-date version, and some of you do, uh, if you've recently had your app updated by tech, you'll have the most recent version. You can probably use these Explore options. But if you don't, you'll have to wait till you get an update, which might not be till the following summer. Teachers and staff, all you have to do is just get an update from the App Store like usual. But either way, at least in this current version when the video is made, footnotes aren't supported there. And you'll also notice one other little quirk as far as accessing the Explore button. If I am just in reading mode for the document and I click the little three dot ellipsis, there is no Explore option on the right hand side. Instead what I have to do is actually edit the document, and this makes sense. Let's pretend that maybe I'm going after this sentence here. Well, I don't want to move the footnote. I'll have to move it back later. Um, let's say I'm going after this sentence here, and now if I click the little three dot ellipsis, now I can actually go into Explore. And with the iPad app to give you uh, better viewing options, they actually overlay the Explore screen on top of your open document. But other than that, the functionality is the same. You know, we can't insert the citation footnotes, but you can still browse through all the topics, related research, images. It still picks up on the topics that you're typing about, and you can also still search. So maybe I want to search Apple Computer instead. And now I have a bunch of web and image results. And let's say I wanted an image for Apple Computers. I like this old one, this old Apple II it looks like. Once you click on an image and it loads, you can click the insert. This looks like uh, it's either blocked or it's a cached image. You want to get an image that can actually fully load. Yep, here we go, like this one, this MacBook here. When you click on it and it actually loads, it's not a cached image or it's not um, blocked, you can actually click the insert button at the top here and it goes right in there. It does have a little... Um, illustration, uh, almost like a footnote here, just basically some text for the image saying where you got it, just to, in a sense, cite where you, where you got that image from. And then again, when you're all done, you can click the little X and the Explore window goes away. And that's how you can use it in Google Docs on the iPad as well. If you have any questions about using this in your classroom or using it um, just in general, just get a hold of me. My email is tmesserall at connie.sd.org, or you can send me a message on Canvas. Have a great day.